he was the writer of the century a noble rebel the most important cultural icon of karnataka he was poet laureate k v puttappa or kuppali venkatappa gowda puttappa popular by his pen name kuvempu as kuvempu described in his narrative poem karisiddha his village kuppali lay at 9 miles from teerthahalli in shivamogga district karnataka though born in a near illiterate milieu that he grew into a cultural icon was in itself a miracle he was born at his mother sitamma's place hirekudige in the neighboring chikkamagalur district on 29th december 1904 venkatappa gowda was his father when maiden mother sitamma carried the cradle bound child to kuppali that became puttappa's home kuppali lies on the lap of sahyadri hill range adjoining the house were forests and hills roaming around in forests and hunting was the pastime of puttappa as was natural in mallad the land of hills at the hill peak behind the house puttappa would sit and watch the setting sun regularly he himself named the spot kavi shaila the poet's pinnacle this devotion to nature eventually turned kuvempu into a nature poet making him describe this flight of birds as god's signature turn of the 20th century even remote malnad could not remain untouched by the larger civilization outside british rule was taking a deep root in the country as part of the colonial exercise christian missionaries who had penetrated nook and corner of the country were causing fundamental upheavals in the traditional hindu society because of their campaign the deprived classes and shudras were becoming aware of the injustice meted out to them those missionaries were attracting the deprived shudra communities into their fold providing free education and medical care free schools and hospitals were opened at mysore and bangalore some of the elders in the puttappa household had gone up to mysore the capital city of the province to study and returned devangi ramanna gowda a kin of puttappa who later became his father in law was a member of the praja pratinidhi sabha or people's representative body he was also a reformer so the family was well aware of the importance of education that's why they got private tutors to educate their children one mr moses sent by christian fathers stayed back to win over the children and his teachings exposed puttappa to the superstitious practices in hinduism puttappa schooling began at teerthahalli after completing his higher primary education at the anglo vernacular school he came to mysore the capital city of the province to join the wesleyan mission high school in 1920 in the meantime 
he had lost his father venkata pagoda in 1916 though puttappa's heart forever stayed rooted in malnad mysore became his second home studies in literature a high school text was the first book that provided a glimpse of world literature to puttappa shakespeare milton carlyle daniel defo ruskin and the like were introduced to puttappa through this small book inspired by this book puttappa visited the city central library at mysore and stood dumbfounded at the wealth of books the library opened the avenue of endless knowledge before puttappa the same library introduced puttappa to the life and works of that radical mystic swami vivekananda vivekananda cast a lasting influence on puttappa even later in 1932 he wrote a biography of swami vivekananda for kannada readers as english was reigning supreme everywhere puttappa began writing in that alien tongue his first collection of poems in english beginner's muse got published in 1922 during his last year at high school this 16 page collection stunned his peers as well as teachers with its diction and metric variety one could detect the influence of rabindranath tagore as well as western romantics like wordsworth in his poems he subsequently turned to his native tongue kannada on the advice of the visiting irish poet james h cousins in 1924 puttappa's decision to shift to kannada not only changed the course of his poetic career but that of kannada language itself having completed ba in philosophy at the maharaja college puttappa got admitted into the freshly started kannada ma at the mysore university in 1927 his teacher t s venkanayya subsequently became puttappa's mentor later kuempu dedicated his magnum opus shri ramayana darshanam to venkanayya in the meantime puttappa came in contact with swami siddheshwarananda or gopal maharaj chief of the newly founded ramakrishna ashrama at mysore this acquaintance became a pivotal incident in puttappa's life swami ji took him to the ashram rescuing him from the noisy santepet for the next 12 years ashram became puttappa's home swami siddheshwarananda nourished puttappa like a second father ashram nourished the personal spiritual and creative life of puttappa contributing to his overall growth even as a student puttappa or kuvempu was a popular poet bommana halliya kindari jogi a poem he composed in 1927 on the lines of poet browning's pied piper of hamelin had made him a household name he presided over the student poets meet held at central college bangalore at the behest of a r krishna shastri in 1928 kuvempu called himself a people's poet his poetry narration sessions turned into events of much fanfare his patriotic songs became anthems for freedom fighters and like all important writers of the kannada renaissance period kuvempu also believed that a writer had the responsibility of social reform kuvempu wrote immensely in terms of sheer volume as well as excellence ಕುವೆಂಪು ಅವರ ಸಾಹಿತ್ಯದ ವೈಶಿಷ್ಟ್ಯವನ್ನು 
love of nature a spirituality gained through study and hard work and rationality these were the three major aspects of kuvempu's writings spirituality to him meant seeing and realizing equality besides the epic shri ramayana darshanam two bulky novels 27 anthologies of poems one collection of narrative poetry three epic fragments three collections of short stories 14 plays seven works on poetics as well as literary and social criticism two biographies six works meant for children and a volume of memoirs were published in his writing career Kuvempu's literature was built basically on non-vedic thought including buddhist and jain philosophy 1920s and 30s while kuvempu studied and wrote were decades of several great conflicts freedom movement and a movement for linguistic unification of the state were gaining momentum on the other hand non-brahmin movement in the mysore province seeking social and political representation to neglected communities in all spheres had reached its peak kuvempu absorbed all these conflicts and grew kuvempu was the first major shudra genius in modern kannada he was so to speak the first authentic rebel but his rebellion was a part of his spiritual quest free from all traces of prejudice of high and low synthesis of all religions taught by ramakrishna paramahamsa swami vivekananda's vedanta philosophy and courage arbindo's vision of the complete man and gandhi ji had all shaped his outlook purna drishti or epic vision samanvaya or synthesis of plurals and sarvodaya welfare of all these were the guiding principles of his life and literature he did not stand for a rejection of everything old instead he believed he was also heir to everything noble in tradition and fought throughout his life against all shades of inequity critics have described this stand of his as rational spirituality om tata purastatya muda jahara naturally orthodoxy was not prepared to take his noble rebellion lying low thus kuvempu had to face the onslaught of orthodoxy all his life and through his lonely at relentless struggle kuvempu came to symbolize a new awakening and a tradition of protest in modern kannada the 70s witnessed a new awakening in the form of developments like conference of annihilation of caste socialist youth forum busa episode which gave birth to literary as well as social movements conference of non brahmin writers and artists farmers and dalit movements and so on all these movements were rooted in the intellectual ground that kuvempu had prepared malenadina chitragalu or scenes from mallar A highly popular prose anthology by Kuvempu was published in 1933. The same year, he began writing the first ever bulky novel in Kannada, Kanuru Heggadathi, which got published in 1936. This novel unveiled the hitherto unknown world of Shudra and Dalits in Kannada literature. Marked by its epic vision, as well as buddhist philosophy this novel became a role model to all succeeding big novels in kannada 
ربما Though inclined towards mysticism since childhood, Kuvempu ultimately decided to have his own family. His wedding took place on 1st of May 1937 with Devangi Ramanna Gowda's daughter Hemavati at Ingladi, almost free from rituals. Hemavati was 16 at the time and Kuvempu 32. The couple began their new life, a life of affection and care at Udayaravi, a new house Kuvempu had built in Mysore. They were blessed with two sons and two daughters. First born Purnachandra Tejasvi himself grew into a trend-setting writer in Kannada. Koki Lodaya Chaitra, Indu Kala and Tarini were the rest. Just a year before his wedding, Kvempu had begun writing his magnum opus Shri Ramayana Darshanam. the first ever epic in modern kannada the writing continued for 9 years at mysore bangalore and then again at mysore and the epic was published in two volumes in 1949 and 51 with the second volume kuvempu had to turn publisher himself and udayaravi prakashana was thus born While at his epic, Kuvempu became the head of Kannada department in Maharaja College in 1946. Later, principal in 55. The same year, Ramayana Darshanam won the Sahitya Academy Award, first ever to Kannada. The state rejoiced at the news, calling Kuvempu the second Valmiki. They saluted the poet with the title Rasarishi, meaning literary seer. In '64, Karnataka government honored him with the title Poet Laureate. In '68, the epic won the first Gnana Peetha Award to Karnataka. In '56. Mysore University awarded him with an honorary doctorate and the same year he became the vice chancellor of the university a kannada teacher elevated to that position was in itself an honor to the language as vice chancellor kuvempu built a new campus for the university on a vast scenic expanse of 300 acres and named it Manasagangotri Kuvempu who had perceived the issue of mother tongue as a spiritual one gave impetus to teaching in Kannada medium at the university level His administrative responsibilities would leave little time for writing and Kuvempu could write nothing much except poems. 
a few years after he retired in 1960 he embarked on a highly ambitious novel the novel malegalalli madumagalu or bride in the hills which took the indian literary world by storm was published in 1967 the beauty of ordinary lives is in fact the essence of malegalalli madumagalu kuvempu wrote with the conviction that ordinariness appealed to god ado ee shatamanada shreshta prati it is the work of century novel of the century i have read premchan tagore and others but no indian novel can match malegalalli madumagalu malegalalli madumagalu depicts the socio cultural transformations that the shudra and dalit lives in malnad went through at the end of the 19th century in breathtaking detail a cosmic vision of malnad in a nutshell His Malayalam Madhumagalu is both Ramayana and Mahabharata to us. I once called Malayalam Madhumagalu the ultimate epic of modern Kannada culture because all the primary streams of our culture are found in this novel. Kuvempu was honored with many laurels and awards all his life. Besides the title of poet laureate and Sahitya Academy as well as Gnana Peetha Awards he received Padma Bhushana Padma Vibhushana Academy Fellowship Pampa Award by the Karnataka government Karnataka Ratna the highest honor by the state Nadoja posthumous award by Hampi University chairmanship of 39th All India Kannada Meet held at Dharwad in 1957 eight honorary doctorates including the one by the world arts and cultural academy of san francisco poet philosopher kuvempu contemplated a great deal as to how an individual especially an indian should live mantra mangalya the simple marriage system devoid of rituals which he devised was to him a way of release from the clutches of priestly class he got his son purnachandra tejasvi married in the same fashion thereby setting an example in the years that followed countless youth in the state have adopted the same method to become husband and wife rashtrakavi kuvempu foundation at kuppali continues to stand in support of this simple marriage system his message of the universal man is a code for mankind all mankind is verily one this must be unconditionally accepted our attempt should be not to reform caste system but to wipe it out completely the caste system that exists in all countries and religions should be totally denounced and destroyed religion should go and spirituality alone must be recognized as a scientific principle humanity must become our religion universal path should become our path and man should become universal man these were the basic tenets of his message he wrote as he lived and lived as he wrote kuvempu just two months before he turned 90 breathed his last at his home on the night of 10th november 1994 the land saluted this universal man with tears of gratitude p
people to pay their last respects lined up the miles between Mysore and Kuppali where he was cremated. His mortal remains were committed to earth at his favorite Kavishela. A bard par excellence, Kuvempu breathed new life into Kannada language and culture and brought it international recognition. He symbolized a new awakening, inspired generations, an eternal guru. Nanna Chetana Aguni Aniketana Aniketana